Now, let me see if I can for a moment put these two visions of the world together. It seems that if you believe the Christian, Hebrew, Islamic view, that you can't admit the Hindu view. Because if you're a Christian, you, the one thing you cannot believe, if that's if you say you're at all orthodox, you're an orthodox Protestant Bible type, or if you're a Roman Catholic, you can't believe that you are God. And so that excludes Hinduism, apparently. But let's go back to Judaism for a minute and ask this question. If Judaism is the true religion, can Christianity be true too? No. No. Because there's one thing in Christianity that the Jew can't admit, and that was that Jesus Christ was God. That is unthinkable for a Jew, that any man was, was indeed God in the flesh. All right, second question. If Christianity is the true religion, can Judaism be true too? The answer is yes, because all Christians are Jews. That is to say, they have taken in the Jewish religion, lock, stock and barrel, in the Old Testament, into their own religion. Every Christian is a Jew plus something else, which is his particular attitude to Jesus of Nazareth. Now then, let's play this game once again. If Christianity is true, can Hinduism be true? The answer is no, for the reason that we've seen. The Christians will say Jesus of Nazareth was God, but you aren't, I'm not. Now then, if Hinduism is true, can Christianity be true? The answer is yes, because it can include it. But how? What would be the attitude of a Hindu to a very sincere and convinced Christian? He would say, bravo, <laughs> absolutely marvelous, what an act. Here in this Christian soul, God is playing his most extraordinary game. He is believing and really feeling that he's not himself. <laughs> and not only that, but that he is living only one life. And in that life, he's got to make the most momentous decision imaginable. In the course of this four score years and ten, he's got to choose between everlasting beatitude and everlasting horror. And he's not quite sure how to do it. Because in Christianity there are two sins to be avoided, among others. One is called presumption, and that is knowing surely that you are saved. The other is called despair, which is knowing surely that you're damned. There's always a margin of doubt about this. So work out your salvation in fear and trembling. So you might say that this is preeminently the gambler's religion. Imagine, you know, at some great casino, late at night, there is some marvelous master gambler who's been winning, winning, winning all night. And then suddenly he decides to stake his whole winnings on whether the ball lands on red or black. Sensation! Everybody gathers from all over the casino to watch this terrific gamble. So in the same way, the predicament in which the Christian soul finds itself is this colossal gamble, which is saying this universe can possibly contain in it ultimate tragedy. There could be such a thing as an absolute, final, irremediable mistake. And what a horror that thought is. And so the Hindu is sitting in the audience, fascinated by this Christian's extraordinary, reckless gamble. He says, that's a beautiful game. The Christian doesn't know it's a game, but uh, the Hindu suspects it is. And he's a little bit admiring it, but not quite involved. Now you would say, perhaps, now you ought to be involved. Give your whole self to this. Make an act of commitment. You know, once to every man and nation comes the moment to decide. 
in the strife twixt truth and falsehood for the good or evil side. Then it is the brave man chooses while a coward stands aside, etc. That sounds great, doesn't it? Commitment. Stand up and be counted. It is a virtue, but on the other hand, do you see another virtue, what we call being a good sport? 